This episode is brought to you by Accenture. A better you starts with better hydration. Accenture is on a mission to inspire people to do what matters most. Their proprietary ionization process transforms water from any source into ionized alkaline water, providing water that's 99.9% pure with a pH of 9.5 or higher. Essentia Overachieving H2O, the number one ionized alkaline water. Shop now. My brand new book, Midwife Pip's Guide to a Positive Birth, is now available. So much more than a book, this is a guide that allows me to hold your hand through your birth preparation journey. With over a decade of experience and knowledge packed in, to ensure you really are empowered in the way you deserve to achieve a positive birth, regardless of the twists and turns that crop up. Make sure that you get your hands on Midwife Pip's Guide to a Positive Birth Book now and are empowered to have the birth experience that you deserve. Welcome to Midwife Pip Podcast Bite Size. Your weekly dose of all things pregnancy, birth, postpartum and women's health to help support you towards a better journey. These episodes are snapshots from previous episodes on the podcast to make sure you have all those golden nuggets of information that you need. And remember, if you're feeling like you would benefit from working with me and having more one-to-one support on your journey, Drop me a message at midwife underscore Pip on Instagram so we can chat about how I support women at this time in their lives and may be able to help you too. Hello, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined today by one of the most passionate midwives and star of Emma Willis's Delivering Babies show. Um, But her journey to midwifery has been far from a conventional one. So Nagme was born in Iran and initially studied law until the Iranian Revolution in 1978, when her whole family had to flee for fear of persecution. And then in the UK, Nagme ended up training as a nurse and then as a midwife and has gone on to touch the lives of so many women. And 40 years later, Nagme is now supporting the babies that she helped into the world have babies of their own. Midwifery truly chose Nagme. And I know I speak for so many families when I say that we are all so pleased that she ended up on the career path that she has. Nagme currently works as a delivery suite coordinator at Princess Anne's Alexandra's Hospital in Harlow. She has a wealth of experience in supporting women through cesarean section birth. So I couldn't think of anyone more fitting to talk about how to have a positive cesarean section birth with us. I think this is where women's voices are so powerful because it's their voices and their questioning and asking questions. So if you're if, you, if this skin to skin in theatre is something that you want and something that absolutely could be facilitated for you, then ask that question because your voices are the most powerful way of us shaping our maternity kind of services and protocols for the future. So don't be scared to speak up and ask questions and use your voice um, because we want this to be an amazing experience for you regardless of the twists and turns that your labour path might take, there's lots of things that can still be incorporated. So speak up for sure. And Nagme, we kind of alluded to the differences between an elective caesarean section and an emergency caesarean section. And I just wondered if you could kind of explain the difference and some examples of why these might take place. Two guys drove to work. Neither guy wore a seatbelt. One guy got a ticket. One guy didn't. The same two guys drove home. One guy wore a seatbelt. One guy didn't. One guy made it home. The guy not wearing his seatbelt didn't. Don't risk it. Click it or ticket. Paid for by NHTSA. Obviously, there are two kinds of cesarean section. One is elective and one is an emergency cesarean section. 
Elective cesarean section is when, for either maternal or fetal reason, the consultant, the obstetrician, has decided uh, with the woman's partnership to make that decision, of course, that that would be the best and safest way to deliver one's baby. Um, a lot of times uh, these days, if you have got uh, twins, multiple pregnancies, if they are both, for example, breech presentation or they have got malpresentation, they are transverse when the baby is lying um, in a horizontal position or sideways. Um, if you have got a placenta previa, that is when your afterbirth is covering the opening of the um, of your uh, neck of your womb. Um, a lot of times still, if a baby is breech, um, of course, as I said, we discuss this with the women and some ladies just would say, right, you have told me all the pros and cons. Thank you very much. But I still would choose to have a, a cesarean section. Or sometimes the ladies have got tocophobia, that is when they are frightened of going into labor, which we do hear that, we do listen to them, and we have got to work with them. And that is, we, in our unit now, we have got a cesarean section team. I don't know if you've got that in your unit yet. We have no, actually- we haven't, but that sounds amazing. It is wonderful. So it's really, it was our, uh, is a cesarean section team from the moment that a lady, uh, a woman will come in and there is any reason that she has got to have a section, she's seen by the cesarean section team, all the clinics are done by them, all their, um, um, their, um, if they need dexamethasone, which is the um, hormone for the maturity of the baby's lungs, they give that, they will um, do their antenatal classes for them. So it's totally one-to-one. -one. And they also, when they come in for the elective section, they are welcomed by the elective section team and they go to theater with them. They will then recover them after the um, theater and they will then take them to the ward. That is absolutely beautiful and wonderful. If you are going for a, an emergency section, there are four categories of emergency section, which is category one, two, three, and four. The category four really is, again, goes to the elective section. And the reason we have categorized them is from the moment the decision has been made in an emergency until we deliver the baby, there is a certain timetable that we have got to follow. And the sooner the better. So for a category one is a half an hour window. So we have to get the baby out within the first half an hour, but it never takes that long. It's literally minutes these babies are out because once you make that decision, you've got to move, not now, yesterday. Um, and this is the one that, you know, is more traumatic for the uh, women. Um, emergency buzzer are sounded. There is a lot of people there. Um, they feel the necessity is so important that they can't ask questions. You can. We are still running around, but you can ask. We are still moving fast, but we are still answering your questions and putting your mind to rest. So that's the one that I always think they need more of a, um, in a way, mental health um, help with respect of um, debriefing them afterwards. And how I like to do things and how we do it in my unit, and I am sure in every unit is the same, is that you are talking to the women and you are informing them all the way through. When they come to recovery, which is the room you go to after your cesarean section and you stay there two, three hours, um, in there, the doctor will come. They will tell you again what they've done, what their findings have been. Um, the, if there is any reason, the baby doctors, the pediatricians will come to see you as well. Anesthetists will come to see you. They will tell you exactly what has happened. And of course, you've got your midwife or you have got the maternity nurse who is recovering you in the um, recovery room. And again, they will go through everything with you. So we are continuously explaining everything. But please, as Pippa said, 
ask. You've got to ask questions because not only you change maternity services and you give yourself a better outcome, you also change our practices for the better. So if we listen to you and we ch I change my practice, then I will take your points of view and I will change my practice for my next woman. So I get it better and better. And that's what we are hoping to get your experience to be that 102%. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's, it's difficult, especially when you alluded to the, the category one emergency cesarean sections. And I think for many women and also their birth partners, that a lot of birth trauma um, and potentially some postnatal depression symptoms can kind of stem from that, that experience because of the speed. And that's really a great ad um, advice that you gave Nagme about the fact that although people might be doing things, um, we are a really well oiled machine and we are used to performing things quickly when we need to for your safety. So we're great at multitasking. So if we are doing something or we're giving you some medication or sometimes it's taking some swabs or popping some socks on you, you can be asking us questions at the same time. And please don't ever feel like you can't do that. You don't just have to lie back and, and have all these things done to you. Please do, do use your voice again. And I love the um, cesarean section team that you spoke about. That sounds really exciting. Yeah. And I wonder whether that level of continuity that women are getting from their um, cesarean sections and from that team that surrounds them, whether that seems to improve some of those um, feelings of kind of failure or, or kind of reduced satisfaction. Do you think that that's really helped? I hope you found that bite-sized episode really insightful. To listen to it in full, go to the description and visit that episode on whatever platform you're listening on. One last thing before you go, as a listener, really help make this podcast successful. I would appreciate if you could subscribe and leave a quick review. Something so little means so much to me and will help so many women's lives.